in Genesis chapter, chapter 25, verse 27. The Bible says, can I turn that? And I'm going to do some teaching today, so if you, if you came to be entertained, I'm sorry. Amen? Look at this here. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 25, verse 26, it says, Afterward, his brother came out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel, so his name was called Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. Huh? Huh? See, 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 what Leah did not understand that, that she should have considered the name Jacob. Huh? They didn't get, they didn't get, they didn't get, they didn't get. See, the problem that we have, beloved brothers and sisters, when we date and we want to hook up with somebody, we don't consider their name. They still didn't get, they still didn't get it. It's because, see, when you look at the name Jacob, Jacob's name is I'm a heel grabber. I'm going to deal with her mama. Not her mama and I 
got jealousy for her mommy and her. Because she got some mommy and her. Come on, say amen. You need to sit down and look at the mommy. All right? If the mama is cantankerous, can you deal with your cantankerous wife? Come on, say amen. See, we don't ask no questions like that. We just as dumb as a Bessie book. Come on. I'm in love. I'm in love. I'm in love. That's stupid. <laughs> Lord. 
always one who is always near. One who is always close. The old song says, just when I need him, he's always there. Simply to God, he ain't all of life's cares. Come on, say amen. God is always there. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, it says, fear not, I am with you. Your husband may not be with you. Your kids may not be with you. But the Bible says, fear not, I am with you. That Ephesians chapter 1 says that I am accepted in the beloved. Huh? As, 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 as people who have been kissed by the African sun, we know what it's like not to be accepted. To have a water fountain labeled black and white. Come on, say amen. To, 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 have, to, have, to, 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 to not have a job because you don't look like the one that was, that was interviewed before you. Come on, say amen. We know what it's like to be rejected. We know what it's like to be discriminated. But the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ
you, but God is going to be God. He will never disappoint you. But number three, and this is it, you got to count your gains and not your losses. This is the text here. The Bible says in verse 35, the Bible says in verse 35, it says, now I will praise the Lord. Therefore, she called his name Jesus. There comes a time when you gotta stop talking about your past. And you gotta stop talking about your Jacob. And you gotta do like the kid on the monkey bar. If I'm going to move forward, I gotta take my hand off of what's behind me and I gotta put my hand on what's before me. That's why Paul says, I press towards the mark. Forgetting the thing, I can't do nothing with the stuff that's behind me. The only thing I can do is what's before me. And I gotta press to. Toy men. 
He's going to have everything he wants in that room. He said, then I'm going to come back in 10 minutes, and I'm going to check and see how he responds. He said, then I'm going to put another son in a room full of cow manure. Feces all over the wall and all over the place. And he said, then we're going to come back in 10 minutes and we're going to see how he responds to his situation. 10 minutes pass by. The father and the friend goes by that room and they peer into the window. And the boy that has everything, toys, everything in the room, he's sitting in a corner crying, complaining. The father steps in the room and he says, listen, why in the world are you complaining and you got everything within your fingertips? He said, well, Daddy, I don't have this and I don't have that, and therefore I'm mad. But then he takes his friend, shuts the door of that room, and he takes his friend to the second room, peeks his head around the corner, looks in the window, and he notices that the son that had manure in the room had a shovel in his hand trying to dig up underneath the manure. And the father steps in the room and he says, what are you doing, Johnny? Johnny said, Daddy, he said, I know it's smell in this room. I know I, 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 I've succumbed to a whole lot of manure in this room. But he said, I know up underneath this mess, up underneath this manure, is a pony somewhere. And he said, the reason why I'm thanking God right now, because he said, I'm not looking at the mess. I'm looking at the blessing up underneath the mess. Sometimes I'll drive around, I'll say, listen, honey, look, look at that homeless man. 
And when she didn't have a job for two years straight, I said, we could be out there on the street. No food to eat. But God is sustaining us on one paycheck. You don't have to go beg for no food. You ain't going for nothing. You could be just like that homeless man. When you start complaining, folk, you need to check yourself. Because you don't know what it is to be truly without. Love it, I said I'm done today. I wanted to start this series because, beloved, we've got war in our families. And we come to church every Sabbath, dressed nice, looking good. As one of my former elders told me, he said, Pastor, for years I was smiling on the outside, but I was crying on the inside because of my home situation. I don't know about you, but for the next two months, I want God to work some miracles in my family. And let me say this here because, see, you know, church folk are hard on pastors. <laughs> y'all Negroes can mess up and y'all want us to, to vouch for you in the board, but when we mess up, you go to conference on us. You don't even practice Matthew 18. <laughs> huh? But when you mess up, you want the mercy of God. Let me tell you this, before my wife gets here, I don't have a perfect marriage. Neither do you. Huh? Don't be looking for no pristine pastor's wife that's going to come to visitation with me because it ain't going to happen. Huh? She just is, we just as normal as you are. If you cut us, we'll bleed. But I'm going to tell you, I may not have a perfect family, but I got a growing family. Pastoral family, because they ain't gonna happen. They ain't gonna happen. But look for a growing spiritual family that's growing in the Lord. I like to be real with you, amen? I like to be real with you. Stand with me, please, with my devil. Close the word for you. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, Jacobs have wounded us. The Jacobs in our family, the Jacobs on our jobs. But Father, through it all, we can say like Leah, thank God for every disappointment. Because Lord, we learned some valuable lessons that people are going to be people. But when people fail, God picks up. But number three, we learned also that we need to count our gains and not what we lost. If you took it away from us, it was for a reason. Jesus, I pray that you would work on all of our families, but first of all, work on our individual hearts. Father, there's some things that we've been dealing with for years, and Lord, they're not even human issues, they're demonic spiritual issues. In our spouses, in us, in our children. And Father, we don't even know how to deal with it. We get fatigued, we get weary like Leah. And we want to take weary measures. Jesus, help us not to be like Leah and step before you, but stay behind you. And be led by you. Holy Spirit, cover my church family and my guests that's here today. And in the name of Jesus, let us thank God for every disappointment, disappointment in our lives. Because disappointments are His appointments. Thank you, Lord, and we praise you in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. We're about to let you go.